G'day guys, today I wanted to talk about Harold Godwinson's oath to William Duke of Normandy. This is seen as the catalyst of the invasion that took place in October 1066. Let's have a look at what pledge did Harold make to William and how did that come to effect? Let's have a look at a little bit of background. Now we've explored much of this in bigger detail in some of our previous videos, but let's take a bit of a look at the broader picture. England becomes under attack from uh, the Vikings such as Sven Folkbeard and later Canute the Great. The uh, calamity that then took place seemingly as a direct result of the St. Bryce's Day Massacre led to um, fundamental change, I guess, in England. That is to say that the, uh, the Vikings attacked with fearsome force and not only did they um, pursue England, but they also um, pursued, I guess, uh, to eradicate the systems and mechanisms of power that existed that led up to, in fact, the St. Bryce's Day Massacre and much other stuff. Edward the Confessor, and his family and many of his close contacts uh, saw what was coming. Not surprisingly, uh, and like many others who could, they fled. Um, Edward the Confessor is hosted in Normandy by uh, Duke William for many years, in fact most of his life. During this time, it's not surprising then that the Normans started to believe that Edward the Confessor owed them something. You have to understand that hosting a king and presumably the entourage would cost a phenomenal amount of money. Uh, you know, you'd have to be able to provide a certain standard of clothing, of food, of or everything else that comes with looking after these people and that doesn't come cheaply. So, um, the Normans think that the the Saxons owe them something, radio. Interestingly, um, there is a suggestion that at some point, Edward the Confessor has made a pledge to William that William gets the crown on Edward's death. Edward doesn't have any children to... Oh, to the Normans, that's not surprising. Okay. So, let's take a look at what's happening after that. Edward returns to England at the death of King Canute, and Edward regains power. A lot of change occurs. The power base transitions from um, Wessex to Westminster, and Edward builds this wonderful abbey. So, beyond this, uh, towards the end of his life, the Saxons would have been looking for a replacement leader. A succession crisis is, is looming, and looming large. It's not impossible because the records from around Europe seem to suggest that Edward in fact promised the crown to a numerous, to a number of different people, including uh, people in Denmark, in, people in Norway possibly, uh, certainly there's uh, indications from Flanders and obviously from Normandy as well. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, in fact, there weren't other claimants to the throne in other areas of France at the time too. However, rising rapidly and very uh, vigorously through the ranks of Saxon society, along comes Harold Godwinson. Harold Godwinson builds on his father's power base 
and he becomes invaluable to Edward the Confessor. He becomes essentially like a, a secretary of state or a kind of a chief of staff type person. This Harold Godwinson is the person you send to deal with your problems. And Harold Godwinson was able to deal with numerous uprisings and rebellions. He dealt with the uprising against Tostig, his brother. He then threw Tostig out of the country. So he's shown incredible allegiance to the throne. He's dealt with rebellions in Wales. And he's uh, been able to be just an incredible statesman. Uh, he's formulated peace agreements in other places. And he's really uh, a very charismatic man, I think, is one of the words that people often use to describe Harold. At some point, Edward the Confessor sends Harold Godwinson to France. His ship, in a storm, is blown off course, and he is captured by a French noble called Guy. Guy ransoms Harold. Now, this would have been an uh, incredibly devastating thing to occur. It would be extraordinarily embarrassing for the Saxons. This is kind of like sending the SAS in and for the other country to discover the SAS. Like, oh my gosh, um, they're not supposed to be there, and how do we deal with this problem? Um, there's a big question around what was Harold Godwinson doing in Normandy at this time? Now, I can think of three different possibilities. Number one, according to Norman sources, Harold Godwinson had been sent there in the middle of a massive storm, yeah, right, um, to reaffirm Edward the Confessor's pledge for William, Duke of Normandy, to gain the English crown on the death of Edward the Confessor. That doesn't seem very likely, uh, if you look at it from a pragmatic point of view. I don't understand why you would send Harold in the middle of such a storm, and if he was sent in such a storm, wasn't he afforded more protection, I guess, and, and more kind of um, respect from the French. That leads to a bigger problem. The second possibility is that Harold Godwinson had gone to France, again, in the middle of a storm, to rescue his brother and his nephew. Now, uh, when William de, de Jumiez was evicted essentially from England. He captured Harold Godwinson's younger brother and nephew. So it's possible that Harold Godwinson had suddenly gone there to rescue these two. It is possible that Harold Godwinson saw an opportunity and thought, now's my time, I'm going to go. Again, I don't understand this. I, I don't think this makes sense, and I don't think the odds stack up. Because if, why would you send such a senior diplomat to rescue two people who had been basically under house arrest, but comfortably under house arrest by the Normans? Uh, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So there's a third possibility. Now, the third possibility is that the English had recognised that uh, William Duke of Normandy had become too powerful. William of Normandy was a young, I would say inexperienced uh, Duke. He was in his, at this time, he was in his 30s. Uh, he, he certainly had been ruling for a while, but he was um, basically power hungry. He had been expanding his lands and territory in France. Um, he had had internal conflicts with the French king and other nobles, and yet he persisted in building and, and um, increasing his, his land size. So, it's possible that the Saxons recognised that William of Normandy was not going to be a suitable choice for king, and that his power base needed to be destabilised. This is a very realistic possibility. This is exactly why you would send someone of the experience of Harold Godwinson into another country. Now, Harold Godwinson wasn't sent to Normandy. He was, in fact, sent to Flanders. And it was only when his ship blew off course that he was basically taken hostage by Guy. 
So it's possible that the neighbouring county of Flanders uh, was seen as, a, as an ally to the Saxons. Hey, look, you know, Nor William Duke of Normandy is building this incredible power base. We need to kind of cut it back a little bit. That is, is a very realistic sentiment that would have been held by the Saxons. However, uh, Harold Godwin said it's ransomed to, by Guy to William of Normandy. William of Normandy now places Harold Godwinson and his entourage into house arrest. Now, at some point, Harold Godwinson must have been able to demonstrate his abilities and his skill um, to William. This is interesting because William then takes it, um, Harold Godwinson to campaign with him in Brittany. And in the Bayou Tapestry, we see it. Harold Godwinson is there. He's in fact been uh, sent in with, with the soldiers, so he's fighting for William. And he sees two French knights sinking into the quicksand. Now, you've got to understand, if you're wearing armour, you're talking about at least 25 to 30 kilograms in that time. So, gambeson, mail coat, helmet, um, plus your, your weaponry. So, easily talking 25, 30 kilos. And then on top of that, you're talking two of these knights that are sinking. Harold Godwinson, without hesitation, rushes in. He grabs one of these knights with one hand. He grabs the other one and throws him on his back. And he rescues these two knights. Now, that is a phenomenal feat of physical endurance. I, having been a soldier, I would say that is, that is extraordinarily impressive. Here is a guy with, with just a phenomenal strength. Um, William is so impressed, he knights Harold Godwinson. This is really interesting because being knighted means that you owe a debt of allegiance to essentially the person who knights you. Often that would have been the king or a senior noble, an earl or a baron. In this case, it was a duke. Duke William knights Harold Godwinson. What happens is, is that, that knighthood creates this uh, bond between them of feudalism. So now, Harold Godwinson has an obligation. We see in the Bayou Tapestry, Harold is forced to swear on holy relics that uh, his allegiance to William and presumably that William will get the throne. Now, it's, it's, it's very strange for a senior diplomat to, to make that promise. It wasn't Harold Godwinson's promise to make. Uh, and in fact, we'll look at this in a second, but it's, it's not even how the um, kingship kind of worked. So, because to become a king, you needed to go through a process. It wasn't just as simple as, yep, you can be king. So, now we have this, this fundamental problem um, that's, that's arisen. And it's really quite, quite an interesting thing. Um, okay, so, but it's equally understandable from the point of view that, that William uh, essentially made Harold presumably make this promise in order to gain his freedom. So freedom for Harold Godwinson wasn't in fact free at all. Uh, and he could take his, his nephew, I believe he took his nephew back to England, leaving his brother in France. In fact, his brother ended up basically living his entire life under house arrest in Normandy, uh, which is just a, a real shame. Anyway, uh, William then lets Harold Godwinson go back to England. Harold Godwinson is then nominated as king. So we know this because in fact it's on the Bayeux Tapestry. Edward the Confessor nominates Harold Godwinson to succeed him. This is witnessed by Robert, who is Edward the Confessor's servant and the Archbishop of uh, Canterbury at the time. So Edward the Confessor has witnesses. This isn't some sort of deathbed confession. Rightio, now, um, so Harold Godwinson must have knew war was looming. Other people were going to be very upset about whatever happened. No matter what happened, 
people were going to be upset about it and it must have been a terrible situation to be in. Radio, in order to be king in Saxon times, you had to meet three criteria. Number one, you had to be uh, nominated or a, success, a bloodline to the, to the monarch. So in other words, uh, if we look at the main contenders, that is Edgar the Atheling. Now he didn't have a bloodline to Edward the Confessor, but he was in fact related to Alfred the Great. So that makes him uh, more than a suitable heir. But Edgar the Atheling was very, very young. He had no experience and no statesmanship. He had no power base. And so given that war was looming, he really wasn't much of a choice. Harold Hadrada did in fact have a massive power base, not so much in England, but obviously he could take a power base with him from Norway. Um, he obviously had experience as a king uh, and obviously a very effective ruler, hard ruler, but very effective. Um, but he hadn't been nominated, to my knowledge, by Ed, uh, Ed, Edward the Confessor. You then have um, William Duke of Normandy. So, um, he was in fact a statesman, very, ro very ruthless statesman, um, very hard ruler by everyone's account, and possibly had been nominated by Edward the Confessor. The next uh, thing you had to do was you needed to do stately things. In other words, you had to, to be a statesman. Harold Godwinson had this in spades. He'd done it in England all throughout his life. He'd been a statesman. He'd dealt with uprisings, rebellions. He'd dealt with his brother. He'd dealt with the Welsh. So he, he had this in spades. Were the other people statesmen? Edgar the Atheling definitely was not. Um, Harold Hadrada probably. Um, William Duke of Normandy, yeah. Um, so at the moment, the last of the critical sort of things is the, the Witten, that is to say, the English Parliament of the time, um, which was essentially uh, a group of nobles, mainly earls, and another, uh, a number of other sort of senior people, senior clerics, that kind of thing, um, would then elect from the suitable candidates. Now, Harold Godwinson was in fact elected, so, uh, and the others were not. Now, we, we know that um, what's interesting is this news went pretty much straight to William. Uh, so, because of um, the Normans hosting Edward the Confessor, they had the influence to insert a whole range of people into England and to effectively spy for them and to be messengers and conveyors of information. Uh, now this would be done by everyone really, all the different tribes and groups at the time were doing this and it's still done today through uh, diplomats and all that kind of thing. So somebody, we don't know who, uh, obviously hears about this firsthand, must have been a very senior person. Now I would, I would think it would take to get from London to the coast probably two days at this time. You have to remember we're in winter. Right, so this has happened in January. So this is this is winter. Um, two days, maybe three. Two days, maybe three to get across the coast, and two days at least, maybe maybe as many as four, to locate William. Uh, William was found in a hunting party, and uh, he was apparently inconsolable with the news for the first couple of hours and then uh, declared a council of war. I think that William would really been waiting for an excuse or an opportunity uh, to justify his invasion. I don't think that, um, and, and William really wanted the crown regardless of what happened. So if he was nominated, then he would have just taken it, uh, but he wasn't nominated, so, um, well, he wasn't elected, so he's now decided to go to war. Okay, so that's basically uh, my video of um, Harold Godwinson's oath to William Duke of Normandy. 
I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.